Hey everybody and welcome back to the 2014 North American Challenger Series. It's time for the third and final game in tonight's quarterfinal match, Cognitive Gaming versus VVV Gaming White. The next team to take down a Nexus will advance to the semifinals in a showdown with Determined Gaming. That should be exciting. <laughs> yeah. So the last game that we just saw, and in case you're just tuning in, um, was the exact opposite of the first game. Uh, VVV White were in control from the very beginning of this game, and so far this series has been all about the junglers. We mentioned just before the break, Get yeah. Snuggled this time around had a really big impact. He was helping out all of his lanes, making use of the Vi Ultimate pretty much on cooldown, and he was also able yeah. to earn himself that 6-1-8 score as a result. So, very well played by him, and Frost Delicious, the AD carry, was definitely uh, one to benefit from those early games. Yeah. So this time around... As we said, you know, jungle attention really does have a really big effect, not only on the AD carry score, but the end game as well. Yeah, I mean, gotta say, like, and they've been focusing the bottom lane so much, and it was it just took one gank to get Chris ahead. And I want to think about him as well, just because game one, first picked away Riven, and and Richie Rich held up against Renekton. Chris took a Mundo and just snowballed the game. I think that's another one that, mm -hmm. like, the other lane that snowballed here for VVV White. Those are both, I think, really important. I, I think you're right. Um, the mid lane as well. So I guess we're going to just go out and okay, share we'll the love. All, all the why not? lanes. All the lanes. That one to me went equal, yeah. I felt like. Um, the ganks didn't mean as much. It as did. I like the KL ultimates, though. Yeah. Uh, some game-changing KL ultimates. So yeah, that's true. I, yeah, I think that was a pretty big impact because it comboed with Chris. They would let him get super low. You burn through all of this Mundo health, and right when you're about to finish, he gets his intervention, and the regen just... Just picks him right back up. So basically they have two Mundo lives here through the whole fight that you have to burn through. Yeah. And it it really, they weren't able to do it. So yeah. they just didn't have enough damage. It was crazy how, like, deep the front line could go. Because half the ults went on Chris. Half of them went on Batosai's Alistair. Mm -hmm. And they were both big enough targets that I feel like none of the KL ults missed. Which one thing is actually, I think, <laughs> is really important. That, like, Microlatios actually landed very good KL ultimates. Uh -huh. They wanted the correct target. They wanted the guy who was getting focused and going down. I never saw an ulti where, like, one guy got it. The other guy dropped right away. Mm -hmm. that, that seemed to be pretty rare unless they were both, like, at 10% health. And so, in general, these frontliners got to dive in super hard, even if they weren't very durable. Get out alive and start the fight out with a killer too. If you are having problems getting the right KL ulti target, you can just use the portraits in the top yes. left. However, that means you have to move your mouse away from the battlefield. So sometimes mm -hmm. if you are you know, trying to change targets really quick, that's too much uh, time wasted. The one thing that I've done, because I used to play a lot of Morgana as well, is mm -hmm. so I, I rebound my items off of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my teammates down the line are 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I would I would regular cast like Black Shield or Intervention, mm -hmm. and I would memorize, like, my AD carry is 3, my AD carry is 3, and I'd just be like, E3. That's like uh, some WoW Arena style um, key binding right I there. I even play that game, and I was just like, yeah, I can. I will make sure I <laughs> never misclick. And I could always self-cast if I needed it for myself, but like, I could, I could always make sure I never misclicked on a person. But I feel like it's easier in the pro scene, because your top laner is always 1, your jungler is always 2, AD carry is 3, supports four, 4 if you're a mid laner. Yeah. Having and to so you always can load in the same way in the regulation mm -hmm. games definitely does help, Helps it, those people. help you out a lot for yeah. the sports. Yeah. Nunu the same way, right? W3, like literally all the time. There's no one else you're ever going to blood books at the AD carry. Just, I feel like that stuff is like really useful and not a lot of people do it. Mm -hmm. um, no, it actually is. Saving that split second with a spell like intervention yeah. <laughs> that depends on split second blocking spell damage. It's a little important. It means everything. Because yeah. the difference between a mediocre Kale and an amazing Kale can be the difference in the game. Yeah. If you, you can block thousands and thousands of damage if you time it right, or you can block nothing. So yeah. it's definitely uh, worthwhile to invest in the timing on that spell. Now we are here under the game, and Cognitive goes back to their game one band, and I'm not surprised. Gragas, Kale, and Ziggs yeah. all dropped <laughs> away. We'll see if Michael Lachos goes back to the Orianna, or if he does something else. And I'm curious to see if Riven still gets stolen away if there's that much sort of Respect to given to Chris. The Caitlyn is going to be bound away, and the Mundo, interesting by BBB White. So they're dropping away a lot of options here. Yeah, they they're under the impression that Mundo is just way too good right now, as a lot of people are. But same old strategy for Cog, pulling away the Riven. I feel like the Riven itself didn't have a huge impact on the game. No. But taking it away from Chris is always a good thing. I mean, yep. that might have a bigger impact that we're not seeing and we're not able to actually measure because sure, don't get to see him in action. Let me see what he does with this one. Of course, Elise being hovered over, that could be Get Snuggled, but it still could be Chris. And I feel like 
Riven's a low sustain lane, and if you're really good with Valor, you're maybe okay against the Elise Harass, but that could be a volatile lane. They go back for Lucian here. The Elise is locked in. I want to see where she goes. I want to say Zemfira. <clears throat> There's a challenger mid laner. I forget who it is, uh, who plays a lot of mid Elise. I think it's Arthalon. Yeah. But there's a couple of like Middle East players up there too. You could call out whatever champion you want, and like Arthlon's probably played it <laughs> just, true. just to see what he can get away with. <laughs> I played with his uh, Jungle Heimer once. Yeah, he w he won the game for us actually, so I can't hate. Please, please. I'm, I'm actually a fan of his Poppy. The uh, I hate Poppy. Arth Arthlon's Poppy's pretty. I mean, good. it's good, but I hate Poppy. As Why? an AD carry, I have nothing I can do against a champion. Right. I just die, and I'm just sad every time. As long as you uh, get through the early game, she, she's yep. extremely annoying for the opposing team. Yep. And this is a very likely lock-in, by the way. Malzahar, we caught it at the beginning, hoping to see it here. Uh, just toying with our hearts, I guess. We'll see. You might switch again in five seconds. See what he goes for. This guy by the name of Open, who plays top lane. Actually, he'll play pretty much any role, uh, Poppy. But he's around my and he's like low diamond one, and he's right. just like... Mm, he's so not you, fun to play against. You know it's him whenever you see that. Yeah, when you see the Poppy on the other team. Yeah. I'm like, all right, see if we can do this one. He runs Lifesteal Quince, just so we can auto attack and stay in lane. Poppy actually fights reasonably well in top lane. Bane lock in. We have not seen this go down yet. No. If you do not focus this lane, we've seen, you know, how swingy the AD carry lanes can be. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're definitely going to have to help her out early if they don't go for some weird switching. Yeah. Weird switching game that we haven't seen quite as much as. Uh, well, the, with the changes to the turrets. The weird thing is, like, I feel like Vayne's a slow turret pusher, though. And if they, if Cog does go for a swap to dodge the 2v2, mm -hmm. uh, if they go for a weak duo lane, they're going to lose turret pressure and dragon pressure. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty much what you give up, is is one of the early dragons if you want to take an AD carry that you're not confident with. So the intention of the change with the turrets was not to invalidate 2 s one switches. It's no. to put a cost on it. So yeah. you have to have a very good reason if you want to do this change. Yeah. And we've seen so many teams still go with it. Yeah. So Works out. And uh, in the case of Jinx lanes, I guess they just push fast enough. We saw Curse use that to really good effect. That was actually fun to watch. And Dig. Yeah. Yeah. The Curse one was, was just beautiful. Curse was exciting. I like that one. Yeah. Here we go. Alistair coming back here for Batosai. Olaf picked up as well. And again, I don't know if that's mid or top. Like, and, I, and both these players can play that champion. It's one of Chris's most played. These summoners could... Give you a little hint. Though. Okay, so Ghost, Ghost Elise. <laughs> no. Okay, so top Olaf jungle Elise most likely here for VDD White. Cognitive right. now looking at their their most likely jungler and support pickup here. He hovered Blitzrank before, didn't go for it. Thresh still available. Actually, everything's still available except for Alistair. Right now, I'm feeling like Cognitive are going to have some hard lanes except for. Uh, mid lane if they do stick with those champions. So they're not going to stick with those champions. Ooh. And they lock in another mid laner. They do pull out the switch. Because nice. they had stayed with those champions, like Riven, the new Riven into Olaf has a pretty hard time because you it's so hard to dodge the Olaf damage with your uh, shield since, uh, you know, it's melee yeah. damage and he's going to be instantly putting that true damage on you. It's There's not a lot of time. You have to have really quick reaction to be able to shield as soon as he raises his arms yep. for the re uh, It's close to impossible. Yeah, it's it's really, really, um, unless you're predicting that he's going to go for it at that time yeah. and it's extremely difficult. So, adding in another melee AD carry means there's no beef on this team. Since Vi's going to be coming from the jungle, yeah. she'll take a long time to get to that tanky point. They're really just going to rely on Zamfira's ult on one of these guys, they're just pretty much going offense. They're like, yep. yes, we'll get a Vi ult, or a Zamfira ult, or maybe a Condemn. One of those things is going to set off this Yasuo, and we're going to chain kill somebody. Somebody's going to be out of the fight really quick. But with an Alistair in there, that seems just so difficult. We'll, we'll see what happens. I believe in the power of Cognitive. They did a really good job in game one. See what they can do with this one. Of course, Lulu most likely going to support here. We'll see what this all runs, but VVV White are going to go back to Orianna here for Microlatios. Didn't have a great mm. impact with it in game one. Got very much out-rotated. But we'll see where this goes with. And he's going to pretty much be having to set up his own shockwaves here. I mean, Olaf can ghost and run in there pretty quick. But it's not like a surprise delivery system. At yeah. least you could also opt for with the repel. But it's also uh, kind of iffy there. So I think, you know, he's going to be setting up, setting up more of his own shockwaves mm -hmm. this time around. And we'll have to see if they can actually, you know, use Alistar to combo with that. Keep people in one one place for long enough. 
See if they can get it. So we are here, top lane Riven versus Olaf. New matchup here. Vi down picked up by Cognitive because Elise was already grabbed there. Gets now going to get on a new jungler this time around. Very good early game jungler. I got to say, Elise scarier than Vi pre six. And both games you've kind of seen determined by early jungle pressure. That mm -hmm. that scares me if I'm a Cognitive fan. Yeah. Um. Get snuggled had a pretty good game on Vi as we said before. So uh, this time around we we'll have to see. If those ults are used on cooldown again, and he hits the first three of them in a row, I mean, there was just no coming back True. after he got that lead, early lead for his lanes. The lanes are a bit flimsy this time, though. Yeah. Vi for, for like, Cog. Yeah, so so Vayne Lulu. Uh, you have Lulu for the pushing, so you can kind of keep your lane a bit safer, because if you're pushing, you're not going to lose CS very much. So Lulu covers that, whereas Alistair... Like, Alistair can set up kills. Uh, so I know Doublelift talks about Vayne versus Alistair some. You can actually completely outplay it. Um, because Condemn range is short enough that if you keep, like, saying, I want to Condemn, then backing off, and I want to Condemn, then back off. Which is just spamming the spell over the champion and then yeah. right-clicking to cancel. Yeah, just over and over, right-click E, right-click E, right-click E. When he goes in for the headbutt, <laughs> you'll knock him back before the pulverize lands. I forget if it comes in fast enough to cancel the headbutt. Mm -hmm. I believe you get headbutted to safety, get away the pulverize, and just... Like, just are safe. Yeah. We did see a lot of random pulverizes into the ground just True. by themselves anyway, so you might not even have to do that. But again, another uh, look at an invade here from VVV White. Zan King's got to be paying attention. All right, Olaf Q's going to land. Zan King flashes. Nice flash. I was expecting to see that at some point. That was beautiful. He didn't even have vision, so he was expecting the flash in from Alistar. And he preempted it. So a trade in flashes, pretty much as good as that could come out. Yeah, I feel like he would have died if he, he had flashed yeah, yeah, the Q. He definitely would have. That was just nice. But this is cool. Zemphir is serenading us. Yeah, sh just give him a moment here. I'm trying to listen to this song. Is that flute? Yeah. Okay. Definitely a woodwind. I'm a fan. Yasuo's got some skills. Uh, so the early invade... Didn't turn out uh, as expected, but really well played by Zan King. Just uh, early flashing. A lot of people get themselves into trouble by trying to hold onto their summoners because mm -hmm. even though nowadays First Blood is worth a lot less than it was before and people would rather have their summoners sometimes than uh, the First Blood money, he was able to trade summoners in anyway. So it's a perfectly even trade. Worked out really well. Gotta say, nice plays overall. Cognitive. Gonna start up with the blue buff here. Richie Rich help, helping out Admiral Ziploc. He's gonna be pretty happy with this one. Gets blue buff, doesn't even spend mana on the first clear. He got a passive at level one. But whatever. Gonna have the mana regen with quarter reduction that he can't use yet. Uh, Chris, this is a classic uh, solo queue move. Okay, let's take a look at this fight down bottom first. A lot of early damage. Nothing here really got chunked out, but is otherwise okay here. Anyway, the move that Chris was doing up top there, waiting in the small bush of the river. Uh, expecting Richie Rich to help his jungler at blue and then come up the river, which is the slightly faster way. Mm -hmm. Olaf definitely has early advantage, so he was looking to get that uh, early fight going, level one, down in the bush. But Richie Rich went the safe way. Good call by him, and he didn't have to run into that situation. He's going to be okay in this one. Let's see these guys who are coming back, trading blows, get snuggled, going to grab his red buff there. Going to be a similar situation for Admiral Ziploc. A bit slower clear for the Vi, but I think all in all he'll be all right. Get snuggled, looking nowhere in particular. Maybe towards the mid lane, maybe just the Wraiths. Not finding any ganks just yet. Level 2 now for the bottom lanes. Nothing here. Did use his potion already to get back to full health. But Headbutt Pulverize now available for Alistair. But no Flash. True. Uh -huh. so and no Condemn yet for Vayne. So Learned oh, Silver Bolts in two. So the, the old counter building up isn't available yet. Jungle is going to come in first probably from uh, Elise because as you said, you know, Vi likes to farm a little bit more, try and get to that level 6, especially when you're going against an Elise. If you run into Elise as Vi, the only time you're going to win is if you see her before she sees you so that you can like get a Vault Breaker off from a bush or something like that. Yeah. Because otherwise, uh, her early level combat is just superior to Vi. Like pretty much early Vi, you have to land your Vault Breaker or else you're going to get dumpstered. Let's see if Ziploc then can make it to six without any incident. Keep track of that one. Nothing here. Now level three. These guys are trading. Now the pings up top were really interesting. They called out the ward from Chris in that bush. So Vi 
jumped the Baron Pit wall here with his Vault Breaker, and now he's waiting for the cooldown to come back up so that he can uh, actually land one onto Chris. Let's see if they can get it. Oh. Goes for it, Chris, trying to shoot. Can he get away? No, gets knocked back, stunned up right there. This is not good for Chris. One more attack to go. First blood picked up there, Richie Rich. <laughs> that was a... That was some good moves. That was some bad moves. I, those Fair. were not good moves. He was okay. right in front of Vi. Just <laughs> basically by doing that, you're letting Vi charge up more damage on her uh, Vault Breaker here. Vi. Uh oh, good Looking though. for someone to party with. Zane King. Oh, good son or nothing here. But they have the damage, though. There's the repel. One more Q, Zane King. Uh, oh. Serious. Forced to flash, but Frost Delicious taking damage. For ooh, ooh, uh, uh, nothing here. Be careful. Okay. Debate. Not die. The cannon yeah. minion, though, working on Elise. Yeah, that was actually a lot of health bar lost there, who did not have repel, would have had to flash to get away. Okay, so successful ganks by both junglers. This time, the bottom focus was again from VVV White. Get snuggled, uh, trying to get down there. Even though it was successful, it was a bit later. So, first blood money went up top, and this time. Chris is on the receiving end, so yep. uh, we'll see what Richie Rich can do with this instead. This is scary. Batosai has flashed now. It just came back up. Zion King should tell him, but no. Uh -oh. Barrier used. Knocked back away. This is not good. Nothing here goes down. Should have known. Hmm. Time in those flashes. You really got to uh, make a habit of that, even in the early game. Like, especially in the early game. Before yeah. minions have spawned, you have nothing else to think about. Except we need to time this Owlstar flash. Well, you know what's convenient? Zion King has the time. It's his own flash cooldown. He'd be like, by the way, flash is up. That's why Let him know. he really, really should have done that. Um, I don't know. D maybe Batosai is a bit deeper in utility. No, they, were, they were pretty similarly no, timed. Like, I'm trying to give him an out. <laughs> no, no, you got nothing. I'm sorry. I appreciate the thought, but I just feel like being indignant about this one. Alice are taking him down. Of course, a great play by Batosai, I got to say. As soon as Flash came up, went for the kill, found it. Chris getting pushed around. Level 6 for Richie Rich. Chris coming back into this one. Woof. Maxing E. That's some good damage. Yeah. Talked about how Olaf has a pretty good matchup here early. Even though early level 6 hit from Richie Rich. Ooh, overstays a little bit. Gets not quite stunned, but still has to run away from this one. Woof. Close one. Flash used by Get Snuggled to get in range from Cocoon. So, Richie Rich, uh, you know, even though he did burn his flash and he put himself into a dangerous position by going that aggressive, he was rewarded with the jungler's summoners. So it was not, you know, all bad for him. Not all bad, but a recall now for Richie Rich. Pretty early on, actually, and a lane freeze by Chris. This is not the best thing now for Riven. You're going to see this Olaf catching up quite a bit. More minion kills. I'm going to be getting a lot more experience here. He doesn't have, you know, mana or HP sustain, though. So... I think that he'll probably try and just clear that wave and not freeze it any longer and shove it out because when Riven comes back with full HP and her cooldowns, then it'll be a bit troublesome for him. Looks like he's not, though. He's just sticking around. Yeah, Chris is waiting. Okay. I believe the E only has a health cost, so it's less Undertoes and Vicious Strikes, but he can at least trade decently. We'll see how it pans out. Yeah. Usually maxing the Undertoes first. Um... For the for the range harass and the slows, but uh, we'll see. He's he's going toe to toe here, and it's not it's yeah. not hurting too bad. He was able to use vicious strikes to sustain his health back up. At least. Look at the damage. There's nothing here. Down to half HP. Even more. 150 health left. Forced to run away. Look at the combo damage. Holy. Vayne extremely fragile and going up against Lucian. He's got plenty of burst, and the early ganks were giving him the BF sword by. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of extra burst because he does get the double attack as well as the scaling for his abilities. Well, back to the jungle these guys go. Get snuggled, level six, clears away his red buff, or to give him blue to Microlatios. Pretty happy Orianna here. Yasuo, probably not given double buffs. I wouldn't expect blue to go to him. There's not much reason for it. He's going to stay in the mid lane. And uh, Zephyr has more or less held up in this lane. Nice little trade by Richie Rich. Damage, actually, wow, half HP on Chris, and doesn't take a second E right there. So much better mm -hmm. trade there. Yeah, the yeah, Richie Rich. Uh, you want to try and take advantage of the openings in Riven's cooldowns, but Chris just wasn't able to uh, quite get there. Now if he sticks around this time, it would be another bait towards the Elise counter. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Trying to run Pops ulti for a little bit more uh, damage. and So he would move block farther. Yeah, and whenever you use your uh, repel early like that, you're stuck in the air for the two seconds because you have to have something to come down on. If there's nothing there, you can't just come down early in the same spot. 
Oh, they're gonna go for a fight right here. Richie Rich is really wanting to get rid of people there. Doesn't quite take the spot of things. Flash Vault Breaker. Microlasia is knocked around. Oh, comes in as well. Do they have the damage? Good shot. Ziploc gonna go down. Zamfir, does he have the damage? He's gonna get traded the on. Shield. Are you serious? Double kill for Microlasios. 1v2 under his turret. Oh my oh. god. That is a problem, diving Oriana like that under the turret. All right, she's she's going to be a pretty vicious mid laner from now on. Oh, man. They committed everything for that. I think it was actually Vault Breaker and then flashing the last edge of it after, which is harder to do. But if you do that under turret, then you're very well putting your life at risk. Man, very well played though by Microlatius. The barrier coming in as well, just put everything uh -huh. he could to keep himself alive. Even went Catalyst, so he had more health than normal. The defensive build definitely yeah. paying off right here. That is a... We uh, never see that. Exactly. <laughs> Early Rod of Ages. It's pretty much a Karthus thing. Haven't seen it uh, on any of the mid laners. No. But here it is. So we'll see how this pans out for these wow. guys. Elise setting up a tent top lane. Yeah, exactly. He's just, he's just camping up here. We talked about how easily it was the top lane was swayed last game. Pretty much the same situation here. Trying to make up for that early kill. Uh, Richie Rich does dodge the undertone. He's not going to get that reset for a while, but the health card is dropping down. Gets snuggled. Finds a partner. Takes him down. 1-0-1. Ziploc trying to answer with a dragon, but he's spotted in the ward. Yeah, and there's a full health duo lane coming in here. The Alistair Lucian, both level 6. Whereas nothing here on Vayne is still 5 on Vayne. The dragon's going down anyway. They're committing hard to this. They're going to get it. Nothing here. Half HP. Batosai comes in. Pops an early ultimate. Ziploc going to get over the wall. Cognitive just gets away, burns two ultis for it. Really, really good resolve there by Cognitive to stay in the Dragon Pit and finish it. Um, able to get out with, with the rest of their lives because Vi can jump that back wall. And Chris hasn't been able to answer with the turret because it was at full life when he started. And it looks like the global gold for that exchange would be in uh, Cognitive's favor. All righty. So let's see. What you got? What you looking at here? Huh? 900 gold hey, apart. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to like get a, a read on the game because you had a bunch of kills, but the gold is pretty close. Mm -hmm. Largely because of the dragon right there. That was actually I think huge for cognitive. And they've got like Riven is who's holding up in lane, right? Doing a pretty good job there overall. These guys have both gotten kills in their respective lane opponents. Mm -hmm. Jungler's pretty equal. Mid laner is, but aside from that double kill, right? Like holding pretty <laughs> closely. But the overall gold like is close, which is crazy because there's so many kills on the mid and bottom lane of VVV White, but the gold is, is still close. I didn't play. pay attention to when those gold items were purchased by each support. So it could be one of them was a lot later than the other. Um, I think Zen Kings was very early. He definitely, have sight stone. Yeah, he's upgraded his first, so he's definitely got the, the jump there. They're getting a bit of more passive gold from him, at least. Matosai really trying to own that that top lane brush. Uh oh, nothing here. So low. Great Lulu ulti. Gonna keep nothing here alive, but that was painful. That trade keeps coming in. Richie Rich fighting Chris under the turret. A lot of damage coming across to Olaf. Early Ninja Tabby and Chain Vest. Again, get snuggled. Repeat ganks on top here. He's waiting. Uh, Chris is going super aggressive, trying to pull Richie Rich out into the lane so that they can get that gank from the side bush once again. Punish him. The only thing is now the flash is up for Riven. And Chris went Flask later on in the game just to get more regen, knowing he's going to get traded on in the fights. But it's going to give them turret pressure. So VVV White in the top lane going to get the first turret kill of the game, putting their gold lead. There we go. A bit higher. 2,000 gold now. VVV White looking great. Yeah, solid play right there because Dragon's already down. Cognitive can't take it twice already. So yeah. committing again to top to at least answer that. Good play. And uh, we see the continued invasion here. That could definitely cost them. Well, we got Trinket Wards down there. Good vision control for VVV White. So I'm going to start this one up. Now, Smites are available on both sides. Who gets it? Sam Fira got it with a Q. Um, not the worst thing I, in the world. Well, it's not good. He doesn't have mana, and he does not benefit very much from cooldown reduction. Yeah. He's one of the few champions in the game that really does not benefit from cooldown reduction. Not much. Jump in on nothing here. Trying to get away from this one. Half HP. Alistair ulti pop for attack damage there. Flash in. Oh, getting blocked. The culling not landing enough. Zion King saving his teammate's life. Slows him under the turret. Barely gets out of that one. Ziploc's fla uh, Ziploc smite was down during the dragon. So I think it was just like, just mm -hmm. someone pick it up to secure it. Yeah. They were just not trying, ideal. Exactly. They were just trying to get that blue buff. Um, 
throw everything you have at it at the yeah. same time. But yeah, so Yasuo, his Q scales with attack speed, not not cooldown reduction, and then the dash doesn't have cooldown once you level it up enough. Not really. So exact, more wind walls, man. Yeah, more wind walls. That's good, and more ulties. Yeah, which already has like a really low cooldown. <laughs> yeah, and, and you wind. have to set up yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, Potosa getting knocked around. Turret likely to go down. Frostlet just stays for it. The jump in, nothing here, is available for this fight. Can they take down Lucian? He's been left to die, and they're going to give the money to nothing here. 360 gold for that one. Maybe the start of something decent for Cognitive. They are behind 2,000 gold. Get Snuggle doing some work pushing more turrets, though. Something that you definitely want to take advantage of when running a ranged jungler like Elise. Able to bully Yasuo off of his turret and get a lot of good damage on the mid. Good stuff. The turret pressure working well for VVV White. Two outer turrets already theirs. Only the middle turret left on that row. But Cog pushing back on this bottom lane themselves after killing the AD carry. But they're going to pull a rotation. Turret's not going to go down yet, I don't think. They are calling in Vi here for some backup. Because uh, they're expecting VVV White to commit resources here since they're pushing up so hard. Um, I'm interested to see what the plan is. That... That red ward that's in the side bush here did not actually see Vi come through try. So it will be a sneaky Vi, but there's three on three. Cocoon lands. That's a bit of a bait right here. 3v3. Great pulverize. Nothing here. Drop low. Elise onto the background. Let's see where these guys can go with this one. Get Snuggled gets away. Just low health bars. Yeah, low health bar from Snuggled and also almost out of mana. So the extra aggression is probably not going to continue here. Richie Rich does answer top turret, though. He's going for a Hydra. First game, I think he went Bloodthirster. Yeah, he did. He rushed it because he got a BF sword on his first back. Yeah. Interesting, because I remember actually most Koreans as well go Bloodthirster over Hydra as well when they play mm -hmm. Riven. Just what I've seen most of uh, Riven's in competitive. So interesting to see a different build out here. It's going to give him some pretty good wave clear, and Hydra's done now. So... Hydra, a little bit less uh, scaling for your abilities and your auto attacks and your shield, but massive wave clear. Yeah. You just obliterate side waves. So he can become a strong split pusher, and he has so much mobility that he can get away from people. Well, gets rid of the spider from Gitsman. Yeah. Look at the burst coming across. Flashes, picks it up. Richie Rich soloing the jungler. He gets a pink ward as well. Yeah. Side benefit, you can just squish five spiders at once if you want to. Uh, does so there, and in perfect time for the dragon. Hey, we just killed the jungler out of position. That's amazing timing. And their wards. Get a nice dragon. What a fortunate series of events for cognitive gaming. And so dragon down to half HP. Going to get that one pretty quickly. No chance for a steal. Blue team picks up dragon. 300 gold cognitive making their way back into this one. But the mid lane turret under pressure. No one's there to defend it. Interested to see where Michaelicious is going to go with this because he's started out with the unorthodox Rod of Ages and now looks even to be building a Zanyas. So he's going pretty defensively with this Orianna. The the high impact shockwaves probably won't be there for a very long time. Yeah. He's really just looking to uh, Zanyas some Yasuo action here. Or he might leave it as the arm guard just for the extra armor. You know, it's a very efficient item by itself. That's true. Here we go. Still no boots, by the way, as well. 180 minions, though, sp uh, farming quite nicely. Maybe not quite uh, Shao Wei Shao numbers, but yeah. 184 in 17 minutes, not a bad score. Certainly farming nicely. Yeah. Just I would like him on. to complete that Zanyas, though, because it's one of the best tools against Vi Yasuo combo. If you Zanyas the Vi ulti, then that is never going to be an option for them. Unless she's, like, right next to you. Yeah. Then she'll her, her travel time will be so short that she could get it off. Be pretty hard to like block that one. Yeah, pretty tough to do. We'll see if you can guess. And uh, so then Fura, right? Double buff earlier went to Microlatios. Double kill went there as well. Still keeping up in farms. And Fura only down 20 minions, sitting there in the mid lane, just killing, killing minions, killing minions, killing minions. Has static shiv. Gonna go for the infinite edge, I'm sure next. Mm -hmm. Holding up despite kind of a, a rough lane. We'll see where this one goes next. They have ridiculous AD uh, AD threat here on oh, yeah. the team, but not a lot of magic damage threat because this time around the Lulu is support, mm -hmm. not going to be bringing that. So I would expect Chris to just stack armor all day long, and he is going for um, an early Frozen Heart and Randowins at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering where he goes with this one. See like which see which one he wants to complete first here. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see where this one goes. He needs I'd another Warden's Mail in the end of the day. but 
You're I right. like it because when you rush just Frozen Heart, then you are lacking the HP to really benefit from all that early armor. Um, but he has gotten the Giant Spell part of it, so he might complete that Frozen Heart first. In that case, yeah. you're slowing everybody's attack speed, even if they're not attacking you. Yeah, Whereas like Randuin's, you have to be the one that's getting focused, so... I do like this kind of split where he's got the HP to back up the armor and he'll get the AoE attack speed scale. You gotta imagine that actually does a lot to Zenfira's Q because attack speed scales the speed of the cast animation, the cooldown of it as well, as well as his actual auto attacks, which he needs to, to be a good champion. So mm -hmm. I definitely like that choice. Yeah, don't so expect him to hit Olaf. He has to be able to weave in his auto attacks with his abilities. And the cooldown of his Q is really important because. He needs uh, to be able to get out more knockups, so yeah. Richie Rich going aggressively, knock up there as well against and they find it! One kill picked up, Alistair cannot save the lives. Batosai getting chased around, do they have the chase? Another Glitterlance lands, Batosai has flash, does not yet go for it, gets hexed and double killed. Oh man, cognitive. I didn't even mention the third broken wings from Ribbon being something that can displace people for Yasuo ult. But they just use Lulu ult there for good measure as well, and yeah. obliterate him. And that's just ironic, because those two don't get along in real life. Lulu, Lulu and Riven? Uh, no, Riven and uh, Yasuo. Ah. Let's, uh, let's delve deeper into this lore, Freak, because I don't pay attention to a lot of lore. I'd like to get that backstory here. What, yeah. what you got? So so Yasuo, wait, hold on. Chris, oh, he's got axes. He's getting hit right here. Tell you in a sec, Zion King not in a good spot. Ziploc shows up. Chris taking damage. Not much, though. He's got a bunch of armor. They jump in now onto Frost Delicious. The chase is there. <gasps> Shockwave whips. Nice move from Zamfira. Chris now running away. Does go down. Vayne picks up a kill. Frost Delicious now in the back line. getting chased down. Richie Rich does go down, but a Windwall is going to block away Micro Lasers from doing anything. Another trade in the kills, and VVV White running away after a one for two. Ooh, that's why I thought I was going to see a lot more of those Orion and Shockwave set up by himself with his own attack. Command attack setting it up. Uh, slow moving Olaf there. Not actually be able to get anybody in the shockwave because he was looking to book it and get yep. out. Yep. Uh, whereas you need uh, someone to go in for the shockwave to work. So good jukes back by Cog. The jump back in. They're trying to just save this turret. There's a lot of damage to nothing here. That cocoon did not quite land. Woo. And they're going to just be able to hold themselves, keep the turret alive. Okay. So Yasuo. Ah, it's a uh, lesson in lore time with Freak. I forget who the person is, but he is suspected of murder. <gasps> um, a murder mystery. And the body was killed by a... Oh, look! Nothing here! He gets away free! <sighs> Safe. The body was, was discovered to be killed by a wind technique, and of course Yasuo is a wind samurai. Mm. Um, in fact, he had to kill his own brother who was a detective on the case, chased him down. And so Yasuo was like, what the F? I didn't kill this guy. I had to kill my own brother because of this. This is messed up. You yeah, just, you just have to kill your own brother. He couldn't convince him. He's like, "Well, who Damn. else would have killed this guy with wind?" He's like, "I don't know, dude, but it wasn't me." Different words, I assume, were used, but had to kill his own brother because <laughs> of this. And then he goes across Riven, and he's like, "Wind." <gasps> hmm. You and remember, framed me. and remember, because Riven is while while she yep. she hates that she was like a, a jerk when she was Noxian is Noxian in the past likely to be the culprit of someone who mm. killed an Ionian, I want to say like Emperor or something. Someone so high up in Ionia. He doesn't have proof though. He doesn't, but he sees her and he's like, three strikes. I've seen this before. Oh man. Oh this, man. That is a hot murder murder mystery right there. But they've set aside the differences for today because Cognitive Gaming wants to make it in the LCS. This quarterfinal's important. It's game three. Thousand gold separates these teams. Yeah. Dragon's up! And a dragon does. So they're putting <laughs> themselves in the pit here. This is pretty dangerous. Vi! Vault Breaker down. Back off a little bit for three seconds. Vi stands for wait a second and wait for Vault Breaker. <laughs> Should be back up by now. It might stand for violence soon, but it doesn't yet. Okay, so e -E -E. look at this. Vayne is actually cheating a little bit here. Getting extra farm in the bottom lane. So this mm -hmm. is small rewards for Cognitive for this standoff. Uh, meanwhile, a top lane push for VVV White is a large amount of money that will be lost to the top turret. So, uh, pretty interesting trade off here. I don't think the top turret is that low that it'll actually go down. Bottom turret, bottom will, turret will though, because Vayne's giving it a little bit of help. 
And VVUI now starting to hit this one. They know they can pull the rotations. This will come across in time. There we go. Two thirds health. Still the damage coming across. Will Cog go in? Five. It's going to be dropping soon. That thing here. Nice. <gasps> multiple man knockup, and they're going to re engage into the battle. Knockup. Micro is getting attacked right there. Takes out not much pain, though, overall. The battle has begun. The dive on in. One kill picked up. Ziplock goes down. A lot of low health bars. Chris getting chased. They're going to get one back on a Bateau side. Nothing here. Does escape. Get Snuggle getting low, but he's going to make it out. Cognitive. One for one in the fight. Who's got control of a dragon? I... Cog. So, sort kind of. of. Kind uh, of, yeah. Yeah, it's still four versus four. I mean, the jungler is down for Cog, so even if you control dragon, don't start it. Don't do that, guys. No. <laughs> I don't think they are going to go for it. But I would also no longer target Orianna with the Vi Yasuo combo because she has that defense build that we talked about and is not looking like she's going to be going down. You've already paid for both of you going all in on her under the turret and mm -hmm. seeing how she can shockwave both of you right after. So definitely, I'd say pick another target, probably Frostalicious. And good stuff by VVV White. They find themselves the dragon here. So 1,500 gold still in the hole. But VVV White coming back into this game. They found a rough mid game for themselves. Now they're getting themselves back into it. Yeah. It, I, as soon as I saw that, I thought it was going to go really bad for them. But they were still able to go one for one. It did end up costing them the dragon global gold because it was their jungler who was the one that bit the dust. Mm -hmm. But all in all, I'd say it didn't turn out too bad for them. You know, and they still have the gold lead and I think that they've learned their lesson. Hopefully. Cognitive did get an outer turret there in the bottom lane, so they've got their second kill well, yeah, the, kill the game. Yeah, the vein split a little while ago. Oh, yeah. That top turret was already down. No, I, I'm yeah. talking about Cognitive the side. Um, okay, so three turrets to two. VVV White doing well here. Batosai spotted out in the top lane. He's going to turn back around. Pings the wards. They know about that gank root for Richie Rich. They don't know about this pink ward in the small bush, though. Ooh. Everybody, you got to train yourself to walk through that thing. If you're going near it, mm -hmm. might as well take a couple extra steps just to check because everybody likes filling those things up with Easter eggs. Doesn't matter what time of the year it is. Look for them anyway. Get blocks, bam, and the recall. Why not? Get some color on the field. Here we go. That's Mid what lane. I do on uh, a Neon Strike Vi instead yep. of my taunt. <laughs> Spam that thing. Spam the recall instead. Blocks you up for longer, though. You have like a quarter second where like, mm -hmm. if they jump, you can't react yet. So you know you can actually cancel your um, Vault Breaker also if you just press recall. V. If you don't want to move at all. It's not like a super useful tool because it takes a while for you to get out of your B animation, but it looks way cooler that way. It does. And it used to um, do the half cooldown, half mana refund as well. Yeah. I don't think it does that anymore. No. Piercing arrow does if you just like keep going with it. I forget if it does it when you recall as well. Um, two items done now for nothing here though. Two, one, and two on Vayne. Got out of the landing phase and actually a minion kill lead on his opponent. He was losing before, but as Ruin King fan on Bancer now, he's scaling up. Frost Delicious on Lucian. Bloodthirster's done. Trinity Force near. So these AD carries similar powers, but a bit of a, a bit more of a spike for nothing here. Something to keep in mind. Last Whisper done. That's important for Richie. Rich, of course, the opposing team's stacking armor. Mm -hmm. Frozen Heart is done. You called that one right. Randwins is next. Chris definitely getting huge. So Vayne going with the attack speed build here. Um, I guess he's one of the Vaynes that maxes the true shots first, yeah. or the uh, silver bolts. Um, first, we've seen Double Lift very uh, outspoken about his love of Bloodthirster first on Vayne mm -hmm. because he maxes the Q first, the tumble. He does. And that benefits way more from, you know, flat attack damage instead of that attack speed. But really, the Olaf here is a great counter to this Vayne build. Yeah. Uh, since he's already got the Frozen Heart and the Randoins is coming really quick, all he has to do is pop the Ghost and the Ragnarok and try and track down Vayne as she tumbles around invisible. Yeah, and she doesn't have her uh, last whisper yet. It's still about a thousand gold away from that. So um, when Olaf does get on her, the only damage he's gonna have is the silver bolts. Ruin King won't do much damage. Crits won't do much damage. There's a whole bunch of armor for Chris. And in fact, with all that attack speed slow, I feel like he will just straight up win that duel. Oh, like, he will. It's just uh, you know, if the rest of Cog collapse and try and peel for nothing here. I think they'll just try and avoid that situation until he can get Last Whisper. Oh, there's the engage. Stun on a Richie Rich. Can they get the damage in? They're going to get some of it. Shockwave does not land. Flashed away, and a Wind Wall helps as well. A lot of spells burn. No one going down. But Richie Rich didn't even have to flash for that one. Yeah, I mean, it would have been a good uh, Shockwave right there. 
But you're right, he didn't even have to... Uh, I thought Yasuo was in trouble, but nobody was. No. Good win well to So now no Shockwave, no Alistair. But Toza's been ulting early a lot. Whoa, Chris coming in from the back here. Bane not in the situation. Four versus five. Four versus five. Nope, we'll just kidding. Five versus five. Lucian's in the fountain. Look at that. Four versus four. All right. Look at that face over there. All right. Up on the side, just hiding. Kidding. Got a little excited. He blended in. We see him. That red border's not, not fooling us anymore. He's got Trinity Force done. <laughs> we've, we've locked on to him. There he is. He's in the base. <laughs> Found that sucker. Not fooling me anymore. All right, first mystery down. Next step, finding out who killed uh, the guy that Yasuo was <laughs> accused of killing. Was yes. it just some random person? Uh, I, no, was it, it, was, just a it had to have been like an official. I want to say it was like like an emperor or something. Like I, I don't unfortunately remember. I just know All it was right. someone important. Maybe he, a general. He killed his brother over it. That's pretty intense. It's got to be like an emperor or something. He didn't want to. He's pissed about it. He's in exile. Oh, well. Poor Yasuo. Man, no I one ever understands. Uh, yeah, I want to know the next chapter in that one. Uh, all right. Meanwhile, the next chapter of the mid lane siege. Still looking at this turret pretty hungrily for Cognitive. But as we said in Champion Select, mm -hmm. they've got no range. This is a team about killing champions, not yeah. about killing buildings. Nope. And if they're going to be looking for a, a fight, uh, they might want to start targeting the Dragon area because currently they're the ones behind on boarding around Dragon. And that would be the better situation to fight under. Right. Richie Rich looking for someone to snuggle with. Found the right kind of person. Trying to jump away. Third Q. Not going to go for it. Feels he might have overextended. Won't stay. I'm surprised. He like actually stayed for that wave. I don't know he knew that they were turning back. But they're going to go for this fight anyways. Infira puts the wind ball down. Gets knocked up. Can he survive this one? Flashes away. The jump in. And they're going to find Frost Delicious. Forces the back. Mike Delicious a bit low. Has Shockwave still available? Stun up there onto Rich Rich. He's going to keep fighting, get snuggled, puts good damage down, but no ulti to get the kill secured. Nothing for nothing. It was a good target choice there, though, by Ziploc. This time going for Frost Delicious and Micro. Oh, here we go. Uh oh, nothing here is not going to like that one. Beautiful Shockwave. Are you serious? Three kills. Make that four in a second. Ziploc trying to run away. Four kills. Wow, what an engage. All right. Defensive build, that's fine if you get those shockwaves off because that's going to be a baron for your team. Four kills, that's it. Oh, complete swing. This is a huge comeback for VVV White. Got to tip off that Orianna. All right, they're going to get a baron. No way that's going to get stolen away. Watch, watch this again. All right, so calling to start this off, the flash in from Batosai, knocking nothing here really deep and positioning himself as the, oh, shockwave. Uh, he caught it cost him his life, but it was worth it. Oh, super worth it. Definitely oh, man. Worth it. Five um, man shockwaves are rare. He both got the vein deep and posi positioned himself for that shockwave. Yeah. That's the Oriana gets the credit. Or, like, like generally speaking, we're like, oh man, Oriana, yeah. what a shockwave. But the real hero, Potosai. Yeah, I'm going to have to give it, give it over. You know? the real Meanwhile, hero. I wanted to start out the beginning, though, because. Vi ultimate onto Frost Delicious while he's standing right next to Orion is perfect. Yasuo ultimate, you got about a 400 AOE when you go in there. You can knock out the people that are surrounding your target too. And he got mm -hmm. both of them, which are the two targets you really want to get. But then, the Tosai happened. Yeah. Oof. So let's see what we got here. Blizzard buff, gonna go to nothing here. And the funny thing is... That fight put the gold to equal, so the Baron was worth the roughly 2,000 gold lead you see right here from BBB White. The only difference being that they have a Baron buff on their people now. Um, so there's a couple things that, that are kind of piquing my interest right now. So one is the Baron buff on the map, so of course they're more powerful right now. Two is the fact that they only need to buy armor to survive Cognitive's damage output until Vayne goes nuclear. And right now, she's like, only three items. I feel like the armor stacking has outscaled the AD comp so far. Yeah, and the thing is, they've got so many attack speed slows here already. It's going to be hard, even with Vayne, you know, getting armor penetration. Uh, hard for her, her to even kill the front line. Oh, another turret goes down. Make that four for DDV wipe. What will they look for now? Top and bottom lane not yet pushing. They ping the second tier turret. They might just backdoor that with the seven million armor, Chris. He's level 15. To be correct, uh, 330 armor. Rage for the team. Rotation's not here yet. This will be a turret. That's going to be a dead turret pretty soon. Okay, make that five now. They've picked up two tier two turrets off this Baron buff now. Mm -hmm. VV White capitalizing so far off that team fight win with a lot of global gold. 
almost 4,000 golden lead now. And Orianna was rewarded. Uh, that shockwave gave her the death cap. So now the damage comes through. The so early the toe side, two out. man shockwave. And Stun's the gonna land Zamfira, not in a good place. Puts the wind wall out, does pop the ultimate, goes down anyway. The jump into the back line, can they kill Frost Delicious? Misses the, the ulti from uh, Riven, actually. And look at the damage there, Frost Delicious picking up the kill. Two more grabbed, three dead per cognitive, only killing off Chris. So nothing here, got to win that fight, finally. But other guys of EV White are huge. Yeah, silver lining there. Uh, the two man ADN support were able to deal with Chris, but at the cost of the rest of the team. And look at this base now starting to go down. Inhibitor turret getting back to because armor tanks can really easily kill off turrets and survive them. Inhibitor likely to fall right after in VVV White after a very, very rough game one. One game two and looking great in game three. Yeah, they're looking like they definitely want to take this one home. Now it's up to a 6k gold lead and they want to take the last outer turret here before they return home, making every little bit of this Baron buff time count. There we go. Okay, four turrets. Pretty awesome, nothing here. Still on the farm, level 16. A lot of level 16s on his team. Poor Lulu, only 13 though, getting out leveled pretty roughly. So I'm gonna keep your eyes on. Thorn mail done for Chris, so even more coming through. Guardian Angel for get snuggled. Items are coming through pretty fast and furious for... Are these Negatron cloaks all headed towards Banshees for Cognitive here? Um, I guess. It's not like there's a super high impact long range spell that's going to be starting these things out. I mean, you could just fire off the culling and grab like three Banshees procs Ooh. by yourself. I guess they want to avoid the Alistar initiate into the Shockwave. Yeah. If you can Banshees veil the initial Alistar. Uh, then you should be able to walk out of the shockwave. Mm -hmm. That sounds like uh, maybe the direction they're going with it. We'll see what they go for this one. But yeah, that's that's the one thing to keep in mind is Banshees can be broken by this VVV squad. It also puts relatively higher pressure on Frost Delicious. You talk about him breaking Banshees, Bill, but also when the team starts buying MR, the physical damage dealers mm -hmm. are more important. And with Chris going tank and having true damage anyway, it doesn't affect him very much. It's like Frost Delicious who gets the lead here. He's doing all right. Three, two, and seven. Three completed items, but going towards GA now. Yeah, so he's exactly. actually he is headed towards defense. stalling. It could even be like a Randuin since the, uh, their opponents are full AD. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good uh, pickup on an AD carry as your only defense item if you're facing a team that's this AD heavy. Yeah. I remember like in the beginning of season three, someone did the math on like buying Warmogs versus GA versus like Locket even. Oh, okay. Because it would give health and a shield. Mm -hmm. now, not the case here. Chain vest not really going into Locket, but like there's like an analysis on like gold per versus like total stat value. In the end, Garden Angel, Banshees, some pretty good choices overall. Looks like it is going to be GA with the Negatron picked up. Cognitive, look for the mid lane. They are going to get this one. So three out of turrets now down. They get something off the Baron buff timing out. But they're 5,000 gold down now. Cog have made some comebacks in this game. Mm -hmm. But VVV White, of course, making a lot of great moves themselves. I mean, it's it just seems to be a very limited squad. We already talked yeah. about how they can't siege up turrets very well. But they also are all the same type of damage. So it's pretty easy to itemize against. You, even though, hey, we've got this true damage from our vein. And hey, Yasuo gets his 50% penetration after his ult. We saw him right there. He got blasted before he could even get his ult off. Yep. So... You can't rely on things like that. We'll see. And it's weird because, like, yeah, Vi has armor shred. I mean, Riven's got AOE armor shred now, so it's yeah. going to help. But we'll see if it cuts through. My mind says no, but we'll see. Maybe they've got. Maybe they've passed that hump finally. Yeah. Spectre enough spells. last whispers and enough black cleavers. You just yeah. chop through anything. Three whispers and a cleaver. Maybe it'll be enough. We'll see. White completely in control. Bottom lane. Dragon goes down to them. Pretty high value dragon right there. 7,000 gold now putting them ahead. That lead is growing. About 50% over their opponents. Red buff is respawned. That's likely to go to nothing here. Ooh, Chris wants a piece. Oh, not able to grab it. Kay. Even though the smite was a bit early. Yeah. He had a chance. But he bursted. I think his actually third W proc was up as well. So we got the percent max health, like probably 200 that proc is worth. I forget what the cap is against monsters on that champion. But Baron is up now. Ooh. Ward control first here to VVV White. They know they're in darkness. <laughs> they're they're waiting right around the tip here. Good ward. Mikhail's also done for Zion King. So if someone gets cocooned, he can save him. 
the ward goes down, gets killed again. He's got a sight stone though, so all he's doing is feeding gold. Not losing vision that much. Well, well they eventually down. run out. Yeah, he's only got. At <laughs> you most don't want to keep on feeding those over. I guess you buy a couple seconds every time you do it. Yeah. Pick up blue, blue trinkets, guys. Yeah, just do it. Well, bottom lane has a big minion wave, and cognitive gaming now setting up over Baron. They've got themselves in a little bit. But they're not even fanning out. They're just retreating back. Yeah, but look at the hard engage. It's going to come from Alistar, and Alistar's not on the front line right now. Now he's looking towards the bottom. Actually, look at this. Frost Delicious, good play here. Rotates to the mid lane. Has free reign over the inhibitors. He's going to force a rotation from Cognitive. They have to defend their base. Uh, well, they could just give up the exposed inhibitor and then try and fight on a turret, but they're going for the fight. Potosite goes in early. He's in the front line. Jump in the back lane is Admiral Ziploc. Can they find the engage? They're going to get back there. Frost Delicious getting low. Shockwave finds one. Ziploc back in the fight. Frost Delicious goes down. One for one. Can they keep going? Oriana double kill. Micro is running around. Nothing here in the back. as well. Yasuo double kill gets back around the wind wall. This could be the fight that Cog needs. Can they get away? Get snuggled to the front line. He gets stunned on the wall. Nothing here. Do you have the damage? One more proc forces the GA. There's going to be two and a half deaths for just two so far. Slowed up. Picked up maybe. Not in range for the oh. repel. Picked up right there. Yasuo triple kill. Not quite in range of those wraiths. But I guess we found the answer to our question. Three last whispers and a black cleaver enough to cut through anything. They didn't end up taking Chris down, but they got the priority targets. It was the uh, Yasuo finally ulting in onto Frost Delicious at the end, taking out that attack damage source. Well, Mike Relatios and Chris know about this. Knock up there onto nothing here. Zamfira very low on health. He has GA, but he's losing his health bar pretty rapidly. And there's no jungler. <gasps> this is so dangerous. Zion King forced to heal himself. Mike Relatios is around. This Baron still losing health. And Cog forced to back off. GA popped by Zamfira. Now Baron's turning on Orianna though. It, it's low, like it's super low. They don't have smite though. They're just too afraid of it getting bursted. Ziploc's back alive, but he's not in range. He bought home guard, but can't get oh, here. Oh, he's still playing with fire. Cog, just stop it. Zephyr loses the shield. Does proc on monsters. They're right. coming back. There's still a ward in there. There are smite has arrived. Well, they've got Ziploc. They popped the wind wall as well, but here comes VVV White. This is so dangerous. Chris in the front line. Shockwave is available. This is so dangerous. Nothing here. Can you get away from this one? Shut down on Oriana. That was massive. Now, can they keep going? Smited. Baron picked up by Cognitive. Chris in the back line. There's nowhere to go. He gets picked up. But toe side there. Richard is still on the chase. Can he find Mike? Oh my god. The damage on a Frost Delicious has a GA. Stuns from Get Snuggle, but he's got a random to try to run away from this one. Nothing here. Finds the kill on a Batosai. Massive pickup, three kills, and Baron for Cognitive. That was beautiful. Richie Rich kills Oriana on his way into Baron to help off Ziploc get it, and they get both of them also winning the team fight. This looks like they might actually be able to end something because they don't have to siege. They could just go straight up to the turrets and chop them down as well. 25 seconds on this respawn for the first guy who's dead. Gets snuggled, gets caught out here, has nowhere to go, does not have flash. Oh. Jumped on, knocked up, gets snuggled, goes down. Five. V1 on the map right now. Can Frost Delicious hold his base alive? The Riven Yasuo combo right there. Unexpected. And they're going to get the inhibitor off of this. And the death timers, they still have 10 seconds on Chris and 13 on Batosai. They backed off. I'm Still surprised they didn't it. go for Nexus turret there. I think that they might have been able to get more kills if they pressured up at the Nexus turret. But you're right, pulling back off of this one. They don't have a lot of cooldowns left. And there were super minions in the base that nothing here was having to deal with. Okay. So they so, recall. We can take a breath. The gold equal 67,000 apiece. Both teams have lost an inhibitor, although the mid lane for COG will respawn soon. Chris continuing to scale up, going for war mags next? Maybe a mallet to stick to his targets? Probably go with the war max. Uh, it would help out since he's got the thorn mail. Uh, yeah. If he can take more damage, that means the enemies that are attacking him are going to take more as well. So yeah, I think boosting that life would, would help out. We've seen though that there's a lot of, I guess the armor penetration, you know, from Vi, from Yasuo, and true damage from Vayne is, is working out. They've got plenty yeah. of armor shred here. The armor stacking has sort of passed its peak. At the mid game, you know, before all that armor shred comes in, they, they do have the advantage. But we didn't mention how the COG team we're able to itemize for you know more Banshee's Veils and more Magic Resist yeah. because they're just killing the AD source on the enemy team. If they yeah. take out Frost Delicious early with uh, the combo with Vi and Yasuo, then it's fine itemizing pretty heavily towards your Magic Resistance. Yeah, two Banshee's done. The only guy who's actually really going for armor is 
the Vi who's diving, that guy anyway. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, Richie Rich on Riven is doing the same. So they're the, the damage dealers, the backliners, are itemizing MR because they're afraid of Microlatios. The frontliners who are diving are saying, yeah, Frostlish is going to be the guy who's killing us. They're actually they're tailoring their builds to their in-battle opponents. I find that very interesting. I like it. I think it's and, a smart uh, choice. And Zane King getting a random one for himself. Yep. He's just afraid. Yeah, and the slow he can add once Chris's Ragnarok runs out. Well, turret's going to go down. These guys capitalizing on their Baron buff. Six turrets going down. Cog equalizing that score nearly. They've got one more turret to go until they make that score nice and trued up. Dragon has respawned. And looks like that's been pinged out. Cog wants that for some more gold lead. They're only up a thousand so far. That'll be closer to uh, two and a half thousand when this goes down. So now that the armor stacking isn't enough, they switched over to GAs. It's not a war mag that comes in for Chris. He picks up a GA for himself, and Frost Delicious already had one. Yeah. It uh, the cooldown's about back up for it though, so they will have. The proc for both of those, while Yasuo's is not going to be available for the very next team fight. And Mike Relations is out of things to buy. He's at six full items right now. I guess he hasn't upgraded Trinket yet, but he like he got the double kill early on, had a dominant lane, seven, one, and six. Not going to scale anymore. Mm -hmm. Gold on him is not going to go anywhere. He's peaked. Same thing here for Zenfira in the mid lane. He's done getting items. So those guys are, are equaled out. There's less room to grow for these guys now. Now, when you're an AD and you max out, you sell your boots and you get a Zephyr. Yeah. When you're an AP... You could. Lich Bane. You could, but the movement speed, you really like that. And Lich Bane, it doesn't give nearly as much as yeah. uh, Zephyr, so I kind of like selling the Morella Namacon instead of selling the boots. What do you think? I feel like he, he's like, he wants a CDR, though, because that was a late edition item. Yeah. And, like, I, I'm trying to think, because I feel like Morella Namacon is just so good. You get you get extra dissonance. You get another shield out there in a fight. I actually wouldn't ditch that because he's gonna have 35 CDR just without blue buff if he gets blue elixirs, which he does. And you don't want to drop from 35 to 15. That's really harsh. Yeah, once you're that close to maxed out, you, you don't want to drop. One thing I actually would consider, um, although there is some life steal that's worth cutting through with Morella Namicon, is um, interestingly enough, Banner of Command, same CDR, five more AP. You lose the unique passive of like the health cutting and, and the mana regen, mm -hmm. uh, but you have the you have the aura passive and you have promote on a three minute cooldown. Like it's actually really good in stats. It costs the same amount of gold. Yeah, I do like that for the end game for pushing a uh, side lane by um, promoting a side lane minion and then pushing the other side. But the life steal that you mentioned, I think, is a pretty big factor in the end yeah. game here since there's so much on all of these attack damage champions. Uh, now that I think about it, the Morello Namicon is is doing a lot of work since yeah. Riven with the AOE lifesteal especially is getting a lot of benefit out of it. Yeah, I think so. Riven looking for a random Zomen here. So actually not even itemized to survive Microlatios basically at all. Kind of scary if he has to fight against this guy, but cares much more about Frost Delicious here. Just dodge the ball. If you can. If you can dodge a ball, then you don't have to buy magic resistance. There you go. <laughs> That's how it works in this game. If he was fighting Heimer, Dodging wrenches wouldn't even be possible. Jax could do it. That's it. Top lane now getting sieged. Baron buff timed out here. So Cog mostly on equal footing. Only 1,500 gold separating these two teams. Inhibitors all back up now as well. We're equal footing on the map. Baron's in 45 seconds. This game ridiculously tense for these guys. Cog owns the map a little bit, but you know the fights are going to be close. Well, they're pretty... Um, confidence in their control over this red side jungle. So I think that they'll be able to just rush down the Baron as soon as it spawns, since they have so much damage on their team, and there's a pink ward already in there prepped. If they're able to shove in the lanes at least even to that turret, they could very easily uh, burn it down quickly. Three GAs, though, worked up here. All of them are ready to roll. There we go. Yeah, they've actually waited out the time. The GAs... Three on one side, one on the other. Another one going to be looked at for Admiral Ziploc there. He's itemizing towards it. Mid lane, they might look for the push. Will he ult in? Will he go for anything? Chris going to fence them away. 5v5 in the mid lane. VVV White looking a little bit more for flanks here. Cognitive. I find it's it's strange, but the team with the uh, Riven is actually not the one trying to flank. Mm -hmm. I feel like you normally don't go head first for this comp, but in this case, they want it for the, the Vi Yasuo engage and the Riven follow up. Whoa. Alistar always likes to go head first. Yeah. So he's he was the one on the side. I think he was trying to kill the pink ward, but because 
Cog were moving up. He had to run away from the Pink Ward, abandon his task, and try to join the rest of his team. He really wants vision control of Baron. Yeah. Both supports forced to loop around the sides. Three GAs, you see them on your screen right here. Chris looking for his opening. They know Shockwave is scary, but with Banshee's Veils out there, Spiderling gets the Banshee Veil off of Ziploc. Elise is one of the big uh, Banshee's Veil removers right now, actually. Wow, we are at that very exciting late game phase They're where looking for it. what matters are the CC. Can't even break the shields on Chris. A combo from Ziploc not doing much. Their slows come across. So the denting blows has to land for them to get that armor penetration at the beginning on Chris, or else he does not take damage, as you can see. Yep. Um, it's going to have to be denting blows or Yasuo ultimate to come in. Before that, Chris is a god. He's pretty safe so far. Cognitive now around Baron. I don't think they can really rush this down. Batosai is around Ziploc there in a brush. They've actually hit Baron. Now, Baron does break Banshee's Veil with his basic attack. They've got to be careful about this one. That's why, you know, Ziploc and nothing here. Stand as far away as they can. Uh oh, there's the Talisman of Ascension pop. They're trying to go in. Team is split, forced though. to run away, but they're going to regroup down here below blue buff. No catch here for VVV White. Ascension popped. It's going to come up first for Zion King. It's up in about 15 seconds. Yeah, VVV White popping their Ascension, and they actually split. AD Carry ran backwards, while Alistar ran forwards. Mm. Maybe some miscommunication. And that is really bad at this stage in the game, where yeah. the team fight is all that matters. Big wave bottom lane. Not going to do much to the turret, I don't think. It would have regen to full health at this point if it was even hurt before. So it's kind of crashing on the way down Wow, look at that there. giant blood wave down bottom, though. They're going in. Ziploc, can he find the ult? He goes in, finds Frost They get the engage. Shockwave's going to land. Pulls in Zamfira. The fight has begun. Richie Rich on the front line. Chris tanking. is going to get popped as GA. This is a 5v4, kind of. Chris forced to run away. One hit from dead. He's going to make it out. Zamfira flashes the wall. Richie Rich forced to run away. Nothing here. Dangerously low. Healed up. Using the, the uh, abilities as he can to stay alive. Knock up again from Yasuo. Everyone disengaging. You gotta be kidding me here. No one even died. You gotta be kidding me. Nobody dies in that. So pretty much all the action was the bottom creep uh -oh. wave. Ziploc with a short charge vault breaker just for the extra distance. Didn't want to get head but pulverized. It would have killed them. Bottom lane still getting hit around. Richie Rich low on health. And this actually gives Baron control over to VVV White. Oh, the giant blob of minions. They're actually ignoring it and trying to rush towards that Baron. They do have ward coverage. Well, home guards are there for Richie Rich. Has a Randwood. going to run up there as fast as he can. But the damage is coming through. Gets snuggled. Going to repel into this fight. Baron low on health. The team charging in. Chris on the front lines. Half HP on Baron. I don't know if they can get there on time. Chris still in the front line fighting everybody there. Pops ulti. Runs away. Ziploc goes in. He gets oh. it. Are you serious? Admiral Ziploc, the second Baron of the game for his team. Wow. Wow. Well, he earned that one. Well, Adam Z <laughs> Admiral Ziploc earned that one for the team. That's going to give them the confidence they need to get top inhibitor, middle turret, middle inhibitor turret. Look at that blob of minions on the top side. There has to be cleaned yeah, out. Cognitive just backdooring these turrets. Batosai goes on in, snuggled. Flash stuns a minion. Not going to find anything here. Easy back off top. Inhibitor died. Two minions on the top side. Cognitive still looking to siege with Baron Buff. All right. Who's going to be point man for the dive here? Let's see. Uh, Vi, probably. Uh, they need to get another ulti onto Frost Delicious. What happened in the last fight is Vi ulti deep on Frost Delicious, but he uses dash and his flash to get under the turret. And by the time that he, uh, Vi and Yasuo got to him, Oriana was there with the shockwave, and they were able to defend Frost Delicious, but only because they were under turret. Okay. Okay. Dragon goes down, Baron buff taken away, top inhibitor is dead. This is, I believe, the first minion wave right there on your screen. Passing the white camp, that is the first super minion wave that is spawned for this top lane there for Cognitive. So that's going to be the beginning of the pressure here. The team has got Dragon, they've recalled Captain's Boots, picked up for Zion King. I don't see those enough, but I like that item <laughs> a lot. I like it. Captain Boots also on Admiral Ziploc. He's an Admiral and a Captain now. So they have two sets of Captain Boots. I think it's home guard. Is it? It's the white outline. Oh, I'm blind. That would have been great, though. I I'm like blind. I like the idea, though. Dang it. He, I wanted, he gets them for free. I wanted two captains. Well, they are the captain's right. boots. So they've got the captain and they've got the admiral. They just have so much military here. Man, this, this game is the really fun point where you get to. Uh, everybody's got the full builds. We have the Zephyrs coming in for both Yasuo and Vayne. Boots are thrown out the window. Everybody's running around barefoot. 
with plenty of swords, so it's very dangerous. Man. Well, how do you hold those swords? They've got, they've each got, what, like four swords and a bow. Actually, no, Vayne has like six swords. Phantom Dancer's two of them. That's why they sell their boots. They hold, they got some on their, on their, feet. On their feet. They go monkey style. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Yeah. Five swords for Vayne, four swords for Yasuo, a bow for each, Banshee's Veil, and a Guardian Angel. Different accessories for these guys. One's got wings, one's got a necklace. All right, so bottom lane, Frost Delicious is his GA up right now. Uh, I think it did not go down in the last fight. They were able to l keep it up um, because that's going to mean that the He's dive. It. Yeah, it is up. Oh god, so that dive is going to be really hard. But the G, uh, the Baron buff might give them confidence to do it. Uh, this time around, Zamfara cannot rely on his Guardian Angel since he w he used it in the last turret dive, going after Frost Delicious. Mm -hmm. So that combo is going to be very dangerous. I don't think they're going to be able to take him down, and they might just have to wait out once again. This could be a very long game. We're already at 55 minutes, but going for that turret dive is still a dangerous possibility since the Guardian Angel is still alive on Frost Delicious. Well, keep in mind, you mentioned the game length. VVV White's games to get here were 55-plus minutes long. Like, this is normal for them. I feel like the team, that, and, they, and they won both those games, so you figure, coming here, they're used to the situation. They're going to know how to act. It's going to come to a head really soon here because yeah. both of these uh, mid and bottom turrets are pretty flimsy at this point. With so much attack damage on COG, mm -hmm. it only takes a couple of hits to take one of these down. Yeah, so the vein split push on the bottom has the Banshee's Veil. Bottom lane, damage coming through, but this turret pretty much untouched. It's just one false move and everything goes sour. Mm. Top lane now has Super Union's flooding in. This is going to require some kind of response from VVV White. And the question is, can Cog do something with that lopsided advantage? They turn back for a blue buff steal. They get that one. But they've let Frost Delicious take away that top lane wave without any penalty. Richie Rich poked out. Wow. You saw what it means to not build magic resist and not mm -hmm. dodge the ball right there. Hurts. Half your life. Half just your from life. the attack and, and dissonance. And I assume she shielded too, and it just didn't even matter. So Richie Rich is going to have to dodge those balls in the next team fight. Wow. And Cog going to force a recall here. So they don't get anything from that Baron buff. The top lane inhibitor died to minions in itself. The four minutes of Baron, nothing accomplished except for a dragon. Money's going to start mattering less and less. This 4,000 gold lead, you can mostly forget about it. I say not completely because there's still a full item left for Chris, a full item left for Richie Rich, half an item for both the junglers. And very minor upgrades left for the supports. You've got at, basically one and a half items left to go. Yeah, at this point, when everybody gets a full six item build, they don't have room for wards. So the trinket choices become that much more important. I would start selling off the uh, sweepers and go for either trinket wards or blue wards at this point and upgrade your trinket ward into the pink version. Yeah, the nine vision meaning a whole lot. And yeah. the funny thing is, though, like, I wouldn't even bother contesting Dragon because the gold doesn't go anywhere. It's only really Baron that matters. And yeah, then Just in that case, buff. yeah, it's the only thing that matters at this point. Everyone's going to be level 18. Except for Batosai, 17. Look at those double elixirs on three members, too. Yeah. Uh, the purple shine coming through. And nothing here lost his Banshee's Veil. So did Zamfira. So there's no Banshee protecting the engages. Ziploc taking some damage here. He's got to be careful of this one. Oh, they go on Frost They're going to go where they find Frost Lich. He's got GA, though. Shocker's going to land, but the GA going to get popped very quickly, and the, the fight has begun. Richie Rich going for the back line. Can they find the kills? Chris forced to pop down. Riven into the back lines. Can they find the AD carry? They do. One kill so far. Get snuggled. Forced the GA. Chris in the back lines going down quickly. Nothing here. Not even getting touched. And Zamfira not going down either. Three for nothing. The fight continues. Everyone is going down. Cognitive Gaming taking out VVV White's entire lineup. They made the combo happen outside of the turret. It was okay to pull off. As soon as Vi goes in, Zamfira combos his ulti, and even though the shockwave is there for both of them, they get their target down, mission accomplished, no attack damage left coming, and Cognitive clean up the fight. There was no damage left over after the Shockwave Frostlish was already forced into his GA, and Ooh. here comes the game-winning push. 58 and a half minutes in, Cognitive crush game one, get dunked in game two, and pull back a difficult game three to force them through into the quarterfinals, two to one. Celebratory touchdown there by Rick, Richie Rich, All and right. man. So, Cognitive showing us, wow, that was a cool endgame Yasuo song. Mm -hmm. huh. 
uh, cognitive showing us how you pull off a set of champions that are all short ranged, mm -hmm. so they're bad at sieging, and they're all attack damage. Yeah. You play it strong early game, get the objectives, um, but then you have to wait out through the period where armor is too much until you get yeah. all of your armor penetrating items. And you have to have champions that have their own armor pen penetration. Yeah. Like Vi and Yasuo. Yep. And Vayne with her true damage. And then you've got to withstand you just wait the all the way till the hour long game. Uh, get GAs on everybody. Mm hmm. And then you go into just god mode and destroy the enemy damage. Yep. Interesting. And it worked out. Very interesting. It's Lucian a long game didn't get plan, to play. But it he works. got killed. It worked. It worked. It was impressive. Now, guys, the final North American Challenger Series quarterfinal games are in our match history, at least for the first spring series. And let's take a look at the updated bracket. Coming up next Saturday, February 8th, it's the battle between David and Goliath. The eighth seeded Skyline tries to make it two upsets in a row when they take on the CS King of the World, Xiao Wei Xiao, and his LMQ squad. And then on Sunday, February 9th, it's the showdown between two of the teams that participated in the Spring Promotion Tournament, Determined Gaming versus tonight's winning team, Cognitive Gaming. And while you'll have to wait a week for those challenger matches, you don't have to wait long for more league action. Coming up Thursday, the European LCS takes to the Rift with four huge games. The day kicks off with Xpeke and Fnatic taking on Froggen and Alliance at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1900 Central European time. And then immediately following the matches between the Lemon Dogs and Team All alternate it's the first european challenger series semi-final between ninjas in pajamas and tick trick and duck so good luck saying their name 10 times fast don't try yet so i with went slow yep <laughs> got it going and with that it's the end of the first ever challenger series quarterfinals once again say thanks to our friends at coca-cola for making this all possible now for myself kobe and the entire live broadcast team thanks for watching good night and gg